The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Tita Blanche Ayuvia, your mathematics teacher. And today we will continue with our lessons. But before we begin the lesson of today, we shall look at the correction of the assignment of the previous lesson. Now, we had asked question. P, Q, and R are the points 5, 0, 6, 0, and 8, 6, respectively. Find the equation of the circle that passes through three points. This question reminds us that the title of our previous lesson was a question of a circle that passes through three points. So we have been asked to look for the, to write, to find the equation of the circle that passes through the point P, Q, and R. Now I asked you particularly to use the second method because we looked at two methods. In the previous lesson, we looked at two methods and we used one method to solve all the questions we had in the previous lesson. So this time around, we're going to use the second method. I hope you did that. So let us verify together. Now we said this method, we had to consider the general equation x squared plus y squared plus 2 into negative px plus 2 into negative qy plus c equal to 0. You remember this equation from our previous lessons we've been having. Now, we said that if these three points, the line on the circle, we are to find the equation, then the coordinates of each of these points must satisfy that circle. Therefore, substituting the coordinates of each of those points in the equation, we have the first point, 5, 0. Remember 5, 0, we have the x coordinates and the y coordinates. Therefore, wherever you see x in the equation, plus 2 into negative px, plus 2 into negative qy, plus c equal to 0. Wherever you see x, y, you replace with 5 as x and 0 for y to obtain what you have displayed on the screen. But you have 10p minus c will be equal to 25. Doing the same thing with the second point, 6, 0, you obtain the equation 12p minus c equal to 36, which is equation 2. And doing the same thing with the third point, 8, 6, you obtain the equation 16p plus 12q minus c equal to 100. You discover that we have come out with three equations which are all simultaneous and we can solve them to come out with the value of p, q, and c. So doing that, solving equation one and two as we have two, equation two, take away equation one, gives 2p equal to 11 which implies that p equal to 11 on 2. That's the first value of p. Now we proceed to get the value of c. And substituting p in equation 1 gives 
10 into 11 on 2 minus c equal to 25, giving us a value of c to be 30. We have obtained the value of p and the value of c. Now we proceed to get the value of q, substituting all the value of c and p in equation 3. We have obtained the value of q to be 7 on 2. Now with the value of p, q, and c, we now can bring back those values and substitute now the value of p, value of q, and the value of c in this equation to come out with what you have displayed on the screen. x squared plus y squared minus 11x minus 7y plus 30 equal to zero. And that is the equation of the circle passing through the points that was mentioned, P, Q, and R. Take note, this method is very, very simple. It's simpler than the method we used in the previous lesson. So preferably use this method when you want to solve questions concerning equation of a circle that passes through three points. It would preferable you use this method because it is shorter. But there are situations whereby you'll be required to use the other method. Now we continue with our lessons under the module plane geometry and solid figures. Just to remind ourselves, we have a subtopic under this module, circle geometry, complex numbers, vectors, integration, first order differential equations with separable variables, location of the roots of any equation, and curve sketching. Now, on the circle geometry, the subtopic we are treating right now, we have as lessons to be treated, to remind ourselves, we said 22 of them, and which begins with definitions and equation of a circle, with given radius and center being the origin, Equation of a circle with center other than the origin. Equation of a circle given the center and a point on the circle. General equation of a circle. Equation of a circle on a given diameter. Equation of a circle passing through three points. If you can see very well from the first to, this, to the sixth lesson, we have treated all these lessons. And now we are moving on to the next lesson, which is equation of a tangent and a normal to a circle. That would be the lesson of today. Con then followed by conditions for a line to be tangential to a circle, parametric equations of a circle, and then converting the parametric form to the Cartesian form of equation of a circle. So these again are the first 10 lessons to be treated from the 22 lessons to be treated under the subtopic circle geometry. So moving on to the lesson of today, as we earlier mentioned, the lesson is titled Equation of a Tangent and a Normal to a Circle. As planned for the lesson, as usual, we begin with the objective, prerequisites, real life situation, learning activity, application exercise, and finally we look at the assignment. Now under the objective, after following this lesson, you are expected to be able to find the equation of a tangent and that of the normal to a given circle. Prerequisites. What do you need in order to effectively follow up this lesson? You should be able to identify a tangent, you should know what is a tangent, a normal and a point of tangency. You should be able to identify all these. You should also be able to state and apply the properties of straight lines. Carry out implicit differentiation. Okay. Now we have some questions to verify if we actually know what is mentioned under the prerequisites. First question we have, find dy by dx if y squared plus 2x 
cube minus 3xy equal to 0. Second question. From the diagram below, what name is given to L1, L2, and point T? What is the angle between L1 and L2? Now we look at the diagram for question 2. You have L1, you have L2. We have a circle. L1 passes, L1 touches the circle at one particular point and L2 passes through the center of the circle and cuts across the circle. And we have the point T. So we are going to look at the questions again. Now let's look at the first question. Find dy by dx if y squared plus 2x cubed minus 3xy equal to 0. Differentiating each term gives. Now we are differentiating each term of that equation. Assuming that you already know how to carry out differentiation on implicit equation, implicit function, sorry. And you know why they call that equation an implicit function. That is a function. Why we call it an implicit function? Because the y, the variable y cannot be easily expressed in terms of x. That's why it's an implicit function. Therefore, differentiating each term of that function will give us 2y. Differentiating y squared will give 2y dy by dx plus differentiating 2x cubed gives 6x squared minus differentiating now 3xy. We have a product here. We hold 1. We hold negative 3y and we differentiate x. That's why we're having negative 3y. And now we hold negative 3x and we differentiate y. That is why we have negative 3x dy by dx, which is equal to 0. So we have differentiated, which follows that, making now dy by dx the subject of that equation. You collect the like terms together, you will have dy, 2y, dy by dx, minus 3x dy by dx to be equal to, we carry now the other terms to the other side of the equation, which is 6x squared, we we'll put it to the other side to become negative 6x, and 3, negative 3y will become 3y minus 6x squared. And so you, we have something that can be factorized here. dy by dx will be equal to, into, sorry, we have dy by dx into, when we factorize that, we have 2y minus 3x equal to 3y minus 6x squared. And so, here, dy by dx will be equal to, we divide all through by that, 3y minus 6x squared on 2y minus 3x. And so, we have made dy by dx the subject of that equation, having what you have displayed on the screen. The second question says, from the diagram below, what name is given to L1, L2, point C? And then what is the angle between L1 and L2? Let the question be in your head. We have, we're looking for the name to give to L1, L2, and T. And what angle is between L1 and L2? Now let's go to the diagram again. We have the diagram. That is L1, that is L2, and that is T. Now, what name is given to L1? You see that L1, this is L1, the line L1. L1 touches the circle at one particular point, which is the point C. And so, with that characteristic, L1 is a tangent to the circle. And L2, it passes through the center of the circle, cuts across the circle at the point T. Therefore, L2 is called the normal to that circle. And the point T is the point of tangency, the point at which L1 touches the circle. So we have had the, we have had the names of L1, L2, and T. Now look at L1 and L2. They meet at the point T. And these two lines from our previous lessons, 
we found out that L1 and L2 are perpendicular. Therefore, the angle between L1 and L2 is 90 degrees. So for the answers, L1 is a tangent, L2 the normal, T, point of tangency. And the angle between L1 and L2 is 90 degrees. Now we move on to the real life situation. I will read and you attempt. Then together we are going to look at it at the end of the lesson. I read the question. A student knows that to write the equation of a line, she needs a point that lies on the line and the gradient of the line. This student came across the question. Find the equation of the tangent to the circle. That is the circle. At the point 0, negative 2. How can the information provided help this student answer the question? What is the problem in this real life situation? This student knows how to write the equation of a, of a straight line. If he has been given the gradient and a point that lies on that line. But now the question given gives but a circle and a point on the circle. So how can this student write the equation of that tangent? Let us look at the learning activity that will help us answer that real life situation. Now let us follow this activity step by step. We have given that L1 is a tangent to the circle. We have the circle x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 2y equal to 4 at the point 1, 3. Let me write down the equation of the circle given. The equation of the circle given we have x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 2y equal to 4 at the point 1, 3. So we should write the L1 is a tangent, meaning that this point is a point of tangency. We should write the equation of the tangent. 1. The first stage, the first guide on how to come about writing the equation of that tangent Differentiate the equation of the circle. We can already carry, we already know how to carry out implicit differentiation. Two, make dy by dx the subject of the equation. Third, what does dy by dx represent? Find the value of dy by dx at the point 1, 3. Use this value to write the equation of L1. Solution to the learning activity. The first one we say differentiation of the equation of the circle gives. Here we have the equation of the circle. We have to differentiate. And we said here, yeah, since this function or the equation of the circle represents an implicit function, to get dy by dx here, we carry out implicit differentiation. Where we will differentiate each term. And so differentiating each term here, we we'll have 2x squared, here we have plus 2y, dy by dx. 2x, because we have x squared here, bring it down. So here the power here is 2 minus 1, which will be x. 2y, dy by dx, minus differentiating 4x, we go to x. We have 4 plus differentiating 2y with respect to x will have 2 dy by dx, which is equal to, now this is a constant, differentiating that constant will give us 0. And so the next stage, we have differentiated that equation and we obtain, that is what we have there, displayed on the screen, the same thing on the board. Now the next stage of the question says, making dy by dx a subject of that equation. And making the sub dy by dx sort of that equation, we have to, first of all, collect the like terms, which will have 2y. Since they are common, we factorize dy 
by dx. And here we have 2y plus 2 equal to. Now I carry this term to the other side of the equation, which will become negative 2x. And carrying negative 4 to the other side becomes 4. 4 minus 2x on, no, not yet. I'm, I want to divide also because I have to divide here. So let dy by dx be alone on this side. So I have dy by dx to be equal to 4 minus 2x on 2y plus 2. And we have made dy by dx the subject of that equation. So dy by dx is this expression here. Now, what does dy by dx represent? Remember, when, you are in, when, we, when we are introducing differentiation, we say dy by dx is the change, change in the y value or change in the x value, which indicates that it is the gradient of a curve at a particular point, because the gradient of a straight line doesn't change. It is constant everywhere. But when we come now to a curve, you see that the gradient of a curve changes at all positions. So, following some procedure, we come out that d, dy by dx gives the gradient of a curve at a particular point, which is a tangent at that particular at that particular point of the curve. So looking for change of y, change in y over change in x. At this particular point, we give us the gradient of the curve. If we know that, and a circle also represents a type of curve. Therefore, dy by dx that we have obtained here represents the gradient of the circle at that point. Of tangency where because we said from the diagram of our activity we have here that we have a circle sorry the circle is funny but let's just do it like that I have a tangent now at this point here at this point this line is a tangent to the circle. The gradient of this straight line here at this point will be the same gradient as the gradient of this circle at this point. Therefore, the gradient of the circle at this point, which is dy by dx, will be the same as the gradient of that line, that tangent there. So that is why we have been asked the question, what, is, what does dy by dx represent? dy by dx simply represents the gradient of the circle at a particular point x, y that we don't know. Now, substituting 1 and 3 in the equation of dy by dx gives. Now, we have been asked to substitute this point in this expression that we have obtained in the expression of dy by dx. What will it give? <clears throat> And if we do that substitution, you will discover that substituting a value that you have the gradient to be 1 over 4. What does this 1 over 4 represent? 1 over 4 is the gradient of that circle at the point of tangency, where the L1, the tangent there is L1. So the gradient of the circle is 1 over 4, indicating that the gradient 2, from what I've explained, the gradient of L1 will also be 1 over 4. So substituting the given information in y equals y minus y1. What given information? The gradient of the circle, which is also the gradient of the tangent. And the point, one of the points, the point, sorry, the point, the point of tangency. Taking the point of tangency and the gradient of the circle, Substituting it in the equation that you see displayed on the slide. Y minus Y1 F into X minus X1. Where X1 and Y1 are these coordinates. 
of the points of tangency, and m, m is the gradient dy by dx. Since we say the gradient of the circle is the same as the gradient of the tangent at that particular point of tangency. So substituting this value, 1 over 4, and the coordinates of the point of tangency in that equation gives the equation y minus 3 equal to 1 over 4 into x minus 1. The equation of the tangent is 4y, that is manipulating that, we have 4y equal to x plus 11. Now, hence, from the diagram below, write the equation of L2. The equation that we obtained previously is the equation of the tangent. Now, looking at this diagram, you discover that on this diagram you have L1, which is the tangent we have just obtained, 4y equal to x plus 11. And L2, now, which is the normal to the circle. We want to write the equation of this normal. And the equation of that normal, since they are perpendicular, what we just need to do is to look for the gradient of L2. And we substitute in the equation of a straight line, and then we obtain the equation of L2. So if we do that, you will see that the gradient M1 times N2 equals to negative 1 because L1 and L2 are perpendicular. So M2 will be equal to negative 4 since M1 is 1 over 4. Now, equation of the normal will be given as Y minus 3. Remember that the equation of the normal, the normal also passes through that point of tangency. The normal also passes through the point of tangency. So y will be equal to negative 4x plus 7. We used the point of tangency to get that 3 and 1 to get the equation of the normal. So we have obtained the equation of the tangent and the equation of the normal. Now we have some recall. A tangent to a circle touches the circle at one particular point called the point of tangency that we already know at the point of tangency the gradient of the circle equal to the gradient of the tangent let m1 and m2 be the gradient of the tangent and normal respectively a be the points of tangency and dy by dx be the gradient of the circle then dy by dx will be equal to the gradient of the tangent as we earlier saw in the activity then M2 will be gotten by just looking the reciprocal, the negative reciprocal of the gradient of the normal. To get the equation of the tangent and normal, substitute M1 and M2 respectively. And the coordinates of the point A, where A is the point of tangency in the equation Y minus Y1 equal to M into X minus X1. To get the equation of the tangent and the normal. Alternatively, if given a circle, with center PQ and a point of tangency that the equation of the normal and tangent will be gotten by simply just applying that formula what you have there, where y1 minus q over x1 minus p, you have the coordinates of the point of tangency and the coordinates of the center of the circle. If you can obtain the center of the circle, you obtain the equation of the normal and you obtain the equation of the tangents. Now, this method. When you use the center and the point of tangency, the gradient you will obtain, you will first of all obtain the gradient of the normal. That is why you see the gradient of the normal there is y1 minus q over x1 minus p. But now when you look at the tangent, the equation of the tangent, look at the equation of the tangent here, you discover that what? It has been taken the reciprocal of the, the gradient of the normal because the two lines are perpendicular. So that is why you have now here x1 minus p over y1 minus q because the product of their gradients equal to negative 1. So this is another alternative method you can use to come out with the equation of the tangent and the normal. So let us look at some questions to consolidate what we have learned. Find the equation of the normal and the equation of a tangent to the circle at the point A, negative 2, negative 1. We have the equation of the circle. So what do we do here? The first thing we have to look at, we have a center. There's a gradient of AC. That is a normal. We are now using the second method where you have the gradient of AC will be given as what? 4 over 3. I hope you understand how to use the formula to calculate the gradient of a line segment, AC. So we have the gradient 
4 over 3, which is the gradient of the normal. Hence, equation of the normal is given by y minus 3 equal to 4 over 3 into x minus 1. Remember that here we have applied this formula to get the equation of the normal. Now, when you're taking this method, you will always begin by coming out with the equation of the normal, or you will begin by coming out with the gradient of the normal first, before you get the gradient of the tangent. Meanwhile, the other method, you will get the gradient of the tangent first, before getting the gradient of the normal. So, if you simplify that equation, you will have 3y minus 4x equal to 5. Hence, the gradient of the tangent. You see, now from here, we get the gradient of the tangent. Negative 3 over 4. The negative reciprocal of the gradient of the normal. So the equation of the tangent will be given by y plus 1 equal to negative 3 over 4 into x plus 2. And simplifying that, you have the equation 3x plus 4y plus 10 equal to 0. And that is the equation of the tangent. Now, we recall the problem the real life situation. Student, a student knows that to write the equation of a line, she needs a point that lies on the line and the gradient of the line, which is very correct. She is very correct. Now, this student came across the question, find the equation of the tangent to the circle. Now, give me the circle at the point zero, negative two. How does the information provided help this student answer the question. This student had never had what you have, you have gotten today to differentiate and you substitute. She has never had that. So that is why the question is a problem to her because she doesn't know how to approach this question. So from what we have already done, what we do need to do is come out with the implicit differentiation of that equation to get the gradient of the circle, which will be equal to the gradient of the tangent that we need to, to write. And so, the gradient of the circle will be given by dy by dx, which is equal to that. Now, substituting the coordinates of the point of tangency, which is 0, negative 2, in dy by dx, will obtain the gradient of the tangent. Remember, gradient of the tangent, dy by dx, is the gradient of the tangent, which is negative 1. And with the gradient of, of the tangent, which is negative 1, the equation of the tangent will be given as y equal to negative x minus 2. Using the same formula, x1 and y1 points of tangency, and m is the gradient, negative 1. So that y equal to negative x, negative 2, is the, is the equation of the tangent. Of that circle. So before we go, take this question and then you solve it behind. You can apply the two methods. You can use the two methods where I look at them to solve this question. Determine the equation of the tangent and the equation of the normal to the circle at the point A, 3, negative 2, and the circle. So we come to the end of this lesson by looking at the second question. Find the equation of the normal and the tangent to the circle at the point 7, 3. See you next lesson, titled Conditions for a Line to be Tangential to a Circle. <laughs> Mane tambia niña ne inju biayen Ngani bana matere mot Ngani la kiri watere ndong Yeso kina bia jinkido Mane tambia niña ne inju biayen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia niña ne inju biayen